In this section, what we're going to do is take our structure that we created in the last video, and we're going to apply our CSS styles so that it actually looks presentable. All right, so uh, when I work with CSS, I like to start top to bottom. I think that's probably the most common way to do it. So at the top, we have basically our header. Okay, so this area. So just looking at it, we know that we need to make this logo smaller. All right, uh, we need to um, we need to add a height to the header. All right, a background color. Um, we need to float our navigation menu. Uh, create these these bullets, these square bullets. Um, and that's pretty much it for the header. So let's get into that. Okay, so we have our index page that we did in the last video. Right now I want to open up our CSS, our main.css file. And this is just a whole bunch of pre-made um, styles that come with the HTML5 boilerplate. All right, so basically our, our color here our main color is going to be um, kind of a really dark gray. Uh, the HTML, which is basically the, the base tag. Um, so we're going to have a font size of 1M and a line height of 1.4M. Uh, and then some other things here. Uh, the horizontal rule tag, it's going to be a light gray. Um, we don't really need to go through all those. Here uh, is where we're going to put all of our stuff, our custom CSS. All right, so <clears throat> before, actually, before we go to the header, I just want to define our main kind of our course styles for, for some of the um, tags. So let's say the A tag, which is a link. All right, so this will apply to all links anywhere on the page. Okay, so I'm going to give them a color of dark gray or actually pretty much almost black. All right. Uh, and then a text decoration. I hate underlined links and I don't know why that's still the default because it looks horrible. So we want to say text de decoration none. And that's just going to take away that that underline for the links. Next thing I want to style is the H2 tag. Okay, and I just want to specify a size. So font size is going to be 25 pixels. All right, and now the unordered lists and ordered lists, even though I don't think we'll have any of them, but uh, what we want to do with them is take away any margin and padding that the browser puts on them. All right, so we'll say margin zero, padding zero, and that's, I think that's good. Now let's do the container. That's a very important class because that's what restricts it to the middle and gives us that width. All right, so I'm going to set margin. Uh, top to bottom is going to have zero pixels, and then right and left will both have auto. And that's what squeezes it into the middle. Uh, we're going to have a width. Uh, many sites will be, let's say, 960 pixels wide, but we want this to be responsive. We want it to look good on, on uh, mobile devices. So we're going to give it a percentage. We're going to say the width is going to be 80%. That way it stretches and shrinks along with the screen size. Uh, and then I'm just going to do an overflow of hidden. So that means if, if for some reason something is too big for its container, uh, it's just going to not show whatever's cut off as opposed to putting a scroll bar. Uh, I think scroll bars are really ugly, um, so I'd rather just hide it in most cases. All right, so let's save that and see if anything's changed. All right, so the, the, the biggest change you see is that it's now not aligned to the, to the side of the browser. And if we stretch it out, you can see that it changes along with it because we have an 80% width on the container. All right, so underneath the container, we can now start and work on our header. All right, so we want the main header, which has an ID of main header. All 
right? And what we want to do is set the height. I'm going to set it to 50 pixels. Uh, we're going to set the background to a dark gray. And for this, we're going to say overflow hidden. All right, uh, and actually, yeah, that's good. And then we're going to have a margin at the bottom, which will be 20 pixels, just so things aren't right up against the bottom of the header. So that's the, the main header. Now we want to style the H1 tag that's in the main header. So we can target it like this. All right, and for that, um, we want to set a zero padding. And we also want to set the color to white. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that. All right, so we have our, our background color and uh, it's 50%, 50 pixels high. All right, so right now we can't see the menu because we have it overflow hidden and it's actually down here somewhere. So what we need to do is that navigation, we need to float that over to the right so that it shows up here. Um, but first, before we do that, let's deal with the branding of the logo. All right, so let's see, branding. Now the branding is gonna float left. Float left, and uh, we'll give it a width of 50%. All right. Um, then, actually, one second. We actually don't need this main header H1. I want to change this to branding H1. All right. And for the padding, we're going to need to add some padding, but I'm going to keep it at zero just for now. Um, so the next thing I want to target is the image in the branding. Now, there's a couple things we need to do to this. One is we want to shrink it. All right, if we look at the final um, page, you can see that it's much smaller. And we also want it to be able to break out of this container. All right, because right now, this 50 pixel high uh, container is restricting the logo. So to do that, we can actually position it absolute instead of relative. So that way, the other, um, the other elements on the page do not affect it. All right, so let's go back to our editor. And we can target that image with the branding div. So branding image. All right, so we want to position absolute and let's say width is going to be 60 pixels and the height will just be auto so it'll basically look at the width and um, it'll add the correct height okay so let's try that out all right so now you can see uh, we have our logo and it's breaking out of that div now this H1 tag, we also need to do a few things too. Uh, one, the text we have here is the tech edge. Right now, since this logo is positioned absolute, it's just laid right over the, the the. So we want to give this a padding on its left so that the text is moved over. Okay, so under branding H1 for the padding, um, if you know CSS, you probably know that we can do padding top, right, bottom, left. All right, so we want the left. So top, right, bottom, left is the last one. And we're gonna set it to move over 70 pixels. Okay, so now we can see the word the. Now, the HTML5 boilerplate framework adds a margin to the H1 tags. And that's why this is pushed down. So I actually wanna get rid of that. So now we could go hit go and uh, edit the, the CSS of the framework, 
Um, but I'd rather not do that. I I rather just do it in our custom CSS. So in that h1 div, we'll just say margin zero, and then we'll put this important tag over it, which means it will overwrite any other styles, any other margins for this element. So let's save that and reload. And it looks like we we need to have some. Actually, you know what? We'll put some padding on it. So the top will have. Let's try 10 pixels. All right, so that's too much. So let's try five. And that looks good. All right, so that's our branding. That's all set. Now the menu, we want to deal with the, the main navigation. We want it to float to the right. And then we want to actually float the li tag so that it's horizontal. Okay, so at the bottom here, Let's focus on our main nav. Okay, so the, this is the navigation as a whole, which we want to float to the right. And then we're gonna give this a width of 50% as well. Okay, 50%, and then we're just gonna do a little padding at the top. 12 pixels, and let's try that out. All right, so the, it actually is there, but the text is uh, the same color as the, the background. So we want to make sure that the links in the main navigation are white. So we can do that like this. Okay. All right, so now they're white. And they're still vertical. We want to float each list item. So let's target that. I'll do that right here. So we want main nav li. All right, and we're going to float the li tags to the left. And we're going to do a few other things here. So I'm going to add padding. All right, so the top will be three pixels. Uh, top right will be five pixels. Left zero, and then the bottom, um, I'm sorry, the left will be five pixels as well. All right, uh, font size, I'm gonna increase it a little bit to 15 pixels. Uh, I want them all to be uppercase, so we can use the text transform property. Text tran transform uppercase, uh, and then the, I want it to be bold, so we'll say font weight is going to be bold, and I want that square bullet, so list style will be square. And then the color will be white. Even if it's not a link for some reason, it'll be white. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Okay, so we're getting there. Um, let's see. One thing I want to do is float the, the whole list to the right. Uh, the actual navigation is floated to the right, but the list itself or the unordered list itself is aligned to the left. So we want to do that as well. So it's really easy to do. We just want to say main nav ul, which applies to the whole list. And we're going to float that to the right as well. All right. Now, to in order for these square bullets to be seen, we want to add some margin to the to the li tags as well. So right under padding, we'll say margin. And for the margin, we'll put um, we want zero for the top and bottom, and then 15 pixels for the right and the left. And there's our navigation. All right, so now you can see that our header is now complete. So we can keep moving down here. So now we want to take care of our main section and sidebar. All right, so let's go to the CSS 
and under the the main navigation styling we're going to style our content section okay so section which has the ID of content actually we don't even need this section all right and the content is going to float left and it's going to have a width of 63 pixels all right I'm sorry 63 percent and we want to use the percentage because this is going to be a responsive template or blog. Uh, and then the sidebar is going to float right. And the sidebar is going to have a width of 30%. Okay, so let's just see if those are, if they'll float. All right, so that's good. Now you can see that these are kind of meshed up against each other right here. All right, and you probably noticed that we used 63% for the content and 30% for the sidebar. All right, so those don't equal 100%. And the reason for that is we're gonna add some padding. Uh, we're gonna add padding and also a one pixel border. So you need to take those into consideration as well if you're dealing with percentages. Okay, so, um, for the content section we're going to add first of all we we'll add a border so border of one pixel and it's going to be solid and we're going to make it light gray okay so that'll give a border around the the content section uh, i also want the border to be rounded all right so we're going to use the css3 property border radius which allows us to give rounded corners without having to use images and we'll make it 10 pixels and then finally of course we need the padding so padding um, we're gonna do 20 pixels except for the top so top is gonna be 0 bottom left I'm sorry top bottom right I'm sorry top right bottom left all right, so let's check that out. All right, so you can see now that the only issue we have here is our images. And this should be a different image. Let me just change that real quick. Um, blog one, this should be blog two. All right, now this goes back to building responsive uh, websites. You want your images to be uh, a certain percentage of its container. All right, and it's not going to do that if we don't set a width. All right, so we want to set a 100% width. That way it, it means it'll be 100% of its container, which is this section. All right, so what we need to do is go to CSS. And um, I'm actually going to style it within the article tag. Okay, so article image. Remember, all those, all the posts are wrapped in article tags. And we're gonna set this to a width of 100%. And now you can see that the images are now in place. They're inside of the, the container. And while we're at it, we should just um, do the rest of the article styling as well. All right, so each article I want to have a, a bottom border to kind of separate these uh, posts. All right, so let's do that. So article, um, yeah, so let's do border, bottom will be one pixel, and I want it to be dotted, and it'll be light gray. All right, and then I'm gonna add a padding to the top and bottom. The top will be 10 pixels, bottom will be 20 pixels. Okay, so let's try that. So now you can see we have this nice uh, border separating the articles. Um, Let's zero out the margin for these headings. You can see that the, the metadata is kind of far away from the, the heading. So 
we'll do an article h2 and I'll set margin to zero and padding I just want to do 10 pixels on the top so padding top 10 pixels All right, so that doesn't look like it really changed anything. Uh, and I think that's because of this meta div, which we'll get to now. All right, so let's do article. And then we have that meta div, which is a class of meta. And I'm going to say margin on the top will be zero. Um, I'm sorry, the top. 10 pixels, top right, bottom, 10 pixels. And then it's going to have a 5 pixel padding. Uh, the background, we're going to make it a dark gray. And then the color of it is going to be white. All right, so let's save that. All right. One thing I'm noticing here is the text is actually much bigger than I want. All right, if we look at the the finished one, the text is much smaller. Okay, so let's change that. Uh, and the reason for that is is the the boilerplate template um, includes your text to be to be a little bigger. So let's change that. Just gotta find it. All right, so if we look at this HTML element which wraps the entire document. It has the font size of 1M. I'm actually gonna change this to 13 pixels. And let's see. All right, so that made the text smaller, so that's good. So we're almost done with the, the main area. I just wanna, um, I wanna do these read more links. If we look at the original, we have this it's kind of a button that stretches across the entire thing. So let's go ahead and add that style. So here we're going to say article, read more. And we'll give it a background of really light gray. And the color will be black, the text color. And I want the button to go 97% across its container. And we want to display it as a block. Because by default, a link is an inline element. We want to set it to block so that it's on its own line. And we're going to align the text to the center. Uh, we'll give it a padding of 10 pixels and a border one pixel solid uh, light gray and we want to set the border radius to 10 all right okay there it is looks good I do want to add a little hover effect so that we can make the color a little darker if we hover over it so I'm just going to copy this and we'll just do a colon and then hover and we'll change the background color. We'll change it to a light gray but darker than what it is. Same color as the border. Alright, so now that changes when we hover over it. Alright, so that's the main section. Now let's do the sidebar. So in the sidebar, the first thing we have is our search box. Okay, so that looks really ugly, so let's change that up. Okay, so the search has an actual div with the class of search. And for the core element, we're just going to float it to the right of the sidebar. Okay, and then we want to grab the, the um, text input. So we can say search input, 
and with CSS3 we can actually we can actually uh, target the type of input. So in this case, the type is search. All right, and if it was a regular text field, it would have the type of text. All right, so with this, I'm gonna just paste in some of these styles just so the video doesn't get too long. So we're gonna have a border, uh, the border radius of the form, of sorry, of the input. Um, 20 pixels height, width is 85%. We'll have a three pixel padding and uh, it'll float to the left. Okay, so now we wanna grab the image, which is the button, and we can target that same way. We're gonna say input type equals image, and that's gonna have a width of 10% and then floated to the right. All right, so let's see. And there we go, so it looks a lot better. All right, so next we have our navigation, which is right here, and I'm gonna paste that in. Okay, so it has an ID of subnav, so the actual element will have uh, 20 pixels padding on the top and bottom. The list items will have a font size of 16 pixels. Uh, they'll be bold. We'll have padding on the top and bottom of five pixels, and then a border on the bottom of each one. Okay, the, the links will be dark gray or almost black, and then the hover will be um, red. Hover or active will be red. Okay, so let's save that, and there we go. So the hovering is red. All right, now this image here, uh, we should always set our images to 100%. So let me just see what that uses. Okay, so the add has a, a class of add, so that's what we can use to target that. So add, actually we want the image itself. Whoop. Okay, image is going to be with 100%. All right, so there we go. All right, so now we just have the footer. So I'm gonna paste that in. All right, so the main footer itself will have a, a dark background, um, a minimum height of 180 pixels, uh, 20 pixel top margin. The overflow will be auto, which means if something goes out of its container, uh, you'll get a scroll bar. Um, Let's see, white links. This targets the actual uh, copyright. All right, if we go down here, we have a paragraph with the class of copy. All right, so we're targeting that here and we're just setting a top padding. Uh, and then we have the footer left and footer right. The navigation uh, will float left. Uh, 31% each. You can see if we look at the final project, uh, these will, will be 30, 37% each so that they can fit in their container. And that's pretty much it for the navigation. I'm sorry, for the footer. So let's save that and reload and it looks good. All right, so that's our main layout. Like I said, we can use actually one more thing, this comments we actually put this in a span because I want to be able I want it float I want it to float to the right. So let's just add that up here. Um, it's part of the H2, I believe. Let me just check. Oh, it's part of the meta. Alright, so meta span is how we can target that. So I'll copy this. And then span, and we just want to float. All right, so now that's float to the right. All right, so yeah, we'll just take this and when we create our other pages, we can use this as a shell and just remove this content in the, in the main area. All right, so we'll do that next.